This is Optics by Board Brain Music. Optics is a module that uses ADAT light pipe cables, you know, the optical cable that looks like this and shoots out red light, to connect your modular synthesizer to your computer, offering eight channels of input and output in only eight HP. DAWs like Ableton Live and Bitwig Studio can communicate with Optics, and this can open up a whole world of creative possibilities. You can use it to record up to eight channels of audio, to control effects in your DAW with modular CV, to send CV from your DAW to your rack, to sequence melodies in your rack with tools from your DAW, to process audio from your DAW with your rack effects. The list is more or less endless. It's a seemingly simple module that's actually pretty life-changing when you really dig in. It has changed the way that I work with Modular and has given me almost limitless freedom for how I choose to record audio, use control voltage, and integrate my hardware and software. Before we unpack these bold claims, let's do the basics. The module itself is built like a tank and is shallow enough to be skiff friendly, 38 millimeters to be exact. It's DC coupled, so you can use it for audio or control voltage. And the unit I've been working with did not produce any kind of DC offset in the DAW. And if you know what I'm talking about, you're probably really happy about that. Depending on your audio interface, you may need to assign some inputs and outputs to ADAT. I'm using a Motu Ultralight Mark IV, so my setup tool looks like this. Consult the manual for your audio interface if you're not sure how to navigate this step of the process. This is probably a good time to underscore the fact that you do need an audio interface with ADAT in and out. Make sure to double check by looking for ports that look like this. Alright, let's dig in and look at some use cases for optics. Let's take things slow and start by looking at sending CV back and forth from Ableton Live to Optics. On the left here in Ableton Live, I'm using the CV Shaper device to draw an interesting wave shape. To the right of the waveform, you can see that I've assigned its output to channel 11, which is the first output on my Optics. Note channel 1 of the Mordax data, which is where I'm sending the CV from Optics channel 1. As you can see, the shape we drew in Ableton is showing up as control voltage in the modular system. Awesome, right? But let's say you have a module that outputs unique control voltage like this Kermit Mark III. Well, fear not, because this works both ways. Here, we're sending an LFO from Kermit, which you can see on channel 2 of the data, into Ableton via the optics. And we can then assign that control voltage to almost any parameter within Live. And of course, any change we make in the modular environment will immediately reflect in the DAW. You can imagine how this approach could yield a highly playable, expressive control scheme with just a few clicks. Let's take this idea further and say that we've stumbled upon a collection of sounds that we want to both capture and affect in interesting ways. Here I've got a rhythmic set of stereo filter pings going into two channels of the optics a drone from Kermit, and a drone from the OCHD. You might have noticed that the clock in my modular is running at a different rate than the clock in Ableton. As a result, time-based effects like this delay are not in sync. Sometimes that's preferable, but right now I want to show you how to set the tempo of the DAW with a modular clock running into optics. We just use the CV clock in device, tell it to listen to the input that we're sending clock to, Specify the clock division that it's receiving, and there you go. Now our entire system is in sync. This is especially helpful when you've got hardware that really, really, really wants to be the main clock. Back to our delay. Let's use an LFO from Kermit to make it more interesting. Let's ask the CVN device to listen to channel 14, which corresponds to optics input 6 in my system. As you'd expect, the LFO is now represented here in the DAW. Let's map it to the delay's time division parameter to give it some interesting automation. Let's also take the same LFO from Kermit and map it to the cutoff value of a low pass filter on one of our drone channels, just to give it some variation in life. Because we're recording the automation, it's there from now on, but we can also edit the automation if we want. It's the best of both worlds.
I really, really like sequencers. Some of my favorites are in my Eurorack, but a few of the sequencers I love are Max for Live devices. If you're in the same boat, Optics is an excellent choice for pairing those sequencers with hardware voices in your rack. Here I'm using a sequencer called Lilcon, which is a bitwise sequencer based on John Conway's Game of Life. Ableton's CV instrument device is really handy. It walks you through a quick routine that calibrates itself for use with any hardware oscillator you've got on hand, and then converts incoming MIDI note data into volt per octave CV and gate or trigger outputs. In my case, I'm pinging blades with the trigger outputs and using the volt per octave how you might expect. I've got a Kermit LFO coming into live via optics, and I'm using it to change Lil Khan's available note range. I'm routing the audio from Blades back into Optics because I'm not done with it yet. I'm going to call up another Max for Live device that I adore, Pitch Loop 89. I've pre-routed that Kermit LFO to a few key parameters to help bring this effect to life. Let's listen. I'm also sending an LFO from Live's CV LFO device out to Optics. Let's patch that into the mode input on Blades, which will modulate the timbre of our filter pings a bit. Lastly, I'm kind of wondering what will happen if we assign the Kermit LFO to Lil Khan's clock. Let's see. So Optics is allowing us to route volt per octave CV and gates to the modular, send audio back and forth, and send CV back and forth as well. Using this approach, you can marry the very best of hardware and software, which will allow you to craft an approach that's uniquely yours. I got into Eurorack originally to do one thing take recorded audio and mangle it into something new and in ways that went beyond what I could do with stomp boxes and plugins. And still, one of my favorite techniques is to take a sequence or sample that I like and transform it into something I love by using my favorite modules. Optics makes this criminally simple and also allows us to retain flexibility in post-production by keeping the output of our effects modules discrete. Here's a pretty basic example of what I'm talking about. A very simple sine wave progression from Ableton's wavetable instrument is sent to Optics, and then out to Tromso, Time Safari, and Arbor. The resulting audio is routed back into Optics, and I'm keeping everything separate so that I can mix it later. I love this workflow because it allows me to capture sounds that are unique and sound like me, but also gives me the flexibility to make creative decisions later on the timeline. Honestly, we could keep going for hours. The creative potential that Optics opens up is limited only by your imagination and I guess by your collection of Max for Live or Bitwig devices. In case you couldn't tell, I am a big fan. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. But now, go make music.